So you've been watching Recreators, and you know, it has such a big cast that keeping track of all the characters could be a little tough. Like who's from this video game and who's from that show. Fortunately for us, we have the handy dandy character file videos for each of the creations. Unfortunately, they're in Japanese, and they're only about 15 seconds long. But worry not, because I'm here to give a quick rundown on each of the creations, so if you want to know who each of them are, what their powers are, and who their creators are, then you've come to the right place. So let's get started with our first character, and that's Celestia Jupiteria. I apologize in advance if I mess up any of the names, it's a little bit hard to read some of these. But you know, uh, the red-haired one that looks like she's straight out of Fire Emblem? She's the main character from the anime and light novel series Elemental Symphony of Vogel Chevalier, which was created by Takashi Matsubara. She was a princess and an adventurer in her world, but after coming to the real world, she adapts to the truth of being an imaginative creation and joins Sota's side. Her powers include magic, flight, a giant mech which didn't follow her to the real world, and expert swordsmanship. She also gained a revised power of flame chant, which is basically fire-based projectiles. Next up in the character files is uh, Meteor Osterich, or as I like to call her, Exposition Time. But she's voiced by Rem, so I guess that makes everything better. She's the first video game character that we encounter in Recreator, since she was an NPC from the open world RPG, A Valken of Reminisce. Her creator was the planner of the RPG, but he had passed away prior to her arriving in the real world. But after witnessing the work put into the creation and her character, she decided to join Sota's side as well. While in the game she was a librarian and a princess, and her powers included a magic shield, magical artillery, similar to that of the Gate of Babylon, restoration magic, and flight. Number 3 is everyone's favorite generic magical girl, Madoka, I, I mean uh, Mimika Kirameki. She was from the Magical Girl anime series Magical Slayer Mamika, which given the name, is pretty surprising that it happens to be a kid's show. Like what kind of Japan has a Magical Girl series that isn't a depressing deconstruction of the Magical Girl series? But I guess that's what her purpose is in Recreators, maybe? <laughs> so while in that show she was both a student and a Magical Girl, so it's pretty obvious that she's the most volatile and rash out of the 8 creations. She tends to lash out against those who disagree with her, and as such, ends up joining Altair's side to try to force the creators to change their worlds. Her powers include Magical Dolce Pétissière, Magical Splash, Shining Shower, and Magical Splash Flare, which if you haven't seen by now, you're missing out on one of the greatest pink nukes you'll ever see. Oh, and she can fly, just like every other creation in the show. Now we've got the over-aggressive swordsman with a stand, Yuya Mirokuji. He's the main antagonist and final boss from the manga Lockout Ward Underground, Dark Knight which was created by Yatoji Ryu. After entering the real world, he started off doing whatever he wanted, but ended up on Sato's side since he dislikes the way that Altair presents herself. His powers include proficiency at swordsmanship with a sword called the Kuyo Nagimaru, which is pretty much an indestructible wooden sword. He also has a companion named Hangaku, which, although is said to be a curse that was put on him, still assists him in battle when needed. Now here is probably the most frustrating character in the entire show, Alice Tilia February who was birthed from the fantasy manga and anime called Alisteria of the Scarlet. While in that world, she was a warrior and a noblewoman who appeared to constantly fight against monsters that were overrun across the country, which of course would lead her to want to change the state of her world. So after entering the real world, she immediately joined Altair's side and kidnaps her creator so that she could force him to fix her broken reality. Her weapons are a lance and a gauntlet, and the gauntlet is sort of a magic item that expels certain projectiles after a chant is recanted. To be honest, some of her chants can be pretty epic, it kind of reminds me of Rider's Noble Phantasm. And number 6 is Rui Kanoya, aka every mech pilot ever. He's from the mecha anime called Infinite Divine Machine Mono Magia, which was created by Masaki Nakanogane. There's really nothing too special about this guy, he just happened to enter the world at his creator's house, who also happened to be a friend of Takashi, so out of convenience he's on Sota's side as well. And as you'd expect, he has a giant mech named Gigas Machina, and is also skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat. But we don't get to see him fight too often, so I'm pretty curious to see what his mech can do. Next up is the current best girl and psycho who has a way with words that will make you kill yourself. And she's the first actual villain that we see, she's from the anime series Yorumado Kiroku, which is a fantasy mystery, and she was created to be very intelligent with the way she manipulates people. So, while in her world she was a student, but after entering the real world, she remains in the neutral zone doing whatever she wants while messing with people on both sides. Her power is probably the most complex, and it's called the Infinite Deception of Words. This ability allows her to change reality through the words that she says, under the condition that it's a lie, and that person rejects that lie. So basically, if she says a lie, and she manipulates the other person to reject her lie, it becomes a lie of a lie. And just as two negatives make a positive, the initial lie will become real. And as Meteora said, it's basically the reverse of cause and effect. 
And finally, we've got Blitz Dakar. He's a former bounty hunter and mercenary from the cyberpunk anime and manga Code Babylon. He gets the least screen time out of any of the creations, so his information is pretty vague, but we do know that his creator is Shunma Suruga. His weapons are pretty cool though, he has a handgun that can shoot out special bullets called gravity bombs that are strong enough to break Meteora's magic shield. He also has a gravity watch that allows him to fly because why not, right? Everybody else can fly. And that's all eight creations. I hope this helped you understand them a bit more. I would have liked to know a bit more about their source material, but this was all the information that I could remember so far from the show. But anyways, as always, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So until next time, ciao!